This is section 2.1 on limits. And in this video, we're going to go through how to estimate the slope um, at a given point of interest. So we're going to go through number 13 in your book. It gives us this equation, um, and it's interested at the value x equals 2. Now, if you remember, when we estimate slope, we want to find a bunch of points closer and closer to our point of interest and find the slope between all of those points in order to get a good estimate of what the instantaneous slope is at this one point. All right, so let's go through this problem. Um, I already have a table populated over here, but we're going to go through each step of how I got this table. All right, so step one is make a table. And really nifty, we already have one right here. Um, but let's go through how I got this table. So our point of interest is x equals 2. And when we're estimating the slope at x equals 2, we want to plug in x values approaching 2 from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So as you see, going from the left, it keeps getting closer to 2. Um, just like from the right, it keeps getting closer and closer to 2. So let's go through one line of this. Let's say I plugged in 1.8 as an x value. I'd go over here, find out what 1.8 is when I plug it into my function. So I get 1 over 1.8 plus 2, which gives me 1 over 3.8. And I'm going to amaze you with my mental math skills. Just kidding. I have a teleprompter telling me the answer. <laughs> but when you plug in 1.8 into this function, you get this y value here. That's your output. And you go ahead, go through, plug in each x value into your function, see what comes out for y. All right, once you've finished your table, then you go to step two. Step two is find the slope. And you want to find the slope between each x value that we plugged in and our point of interest. So again, let's go through an example, one of these. Let's say I'm calculating the slope from 1.8 to 2. Remember your slope formula? It's the difference in the y's over difference in, difference in the x's. So I go to my table, I say, well, my y2, when I plugged in 2 into my function, was 0 0.25. And my y1, when I plugged in 1.8, is this whole long decimal here. Notice I kept a bunch of decimals in this table. That'll help you get a more exact answer. If you only leave two or three decimals in there, you won't really be able to see the pattern of where the slope is going. So you want to keep at least four or five decimals in your answers. All right, side note, let's get back to the problem. So here's my difference in the y's at the top. Difference in the x's, I plugged in 2 for my x2, and my x1 was 1.8. I'm going to wow you with my mental math again. This slope is equal to negative 0.06578. So I go, put that in my table, and I can repeat that same process for each x value, going from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now once I've done that, I've completed my table, found all of my slopes. Now I just look at the slopes and see um, where they're approaching. And if you're to look at all these numbers, you see that both from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, the slopes are approaching about negative 0.062. And that's your, that's your answer. So the slope at x equals 2 is approximately negative 0.062. And that's it for this problem. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.